Greetings once again, everybody. Welcome back to the table for another episode of The Pokey Factor. I'm Nigel here. I'm Dennis. And Joseph. And Paul. All right. So for this week's episode, what we decided to do was pick our favorite budget knife out of our collection and then trade it out with everyone. Yeah, you saw the good stuff the last two weeks in a row, and you saw all the fancy stuff that we had to offer. And, and some of it was pretty fancy, and some of it was questionable, but... Uh, Looking at you. So we're going, <laughs> we're going with budget knives. Everything I had last week was fancy. What are you talking about? Yeah, everything was good. It was good. Haters. <laughs> Just kidding. So uh, we're, we're going to do some budget knives. Yeah. Um, and it's what we've been carrying. So we mixed it up. We forced each other. Literally, uh, everything we cut was with whatever budget, budget knife. knife. And halfway <laughs> through the week, we traded off. As unhappy as we were sometimes to cut stuff with stuff. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we'll I gave up my Sebenza for this. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that. Oh, and we all gave up. We all oh, gave yeah. up. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm so just bitter. rather than doing the what are we carrying right off the bat, we're going to do the what are we carrying one at a time type of thing and as we show what we've been carrying from each other's collection we'll talk about it for a bit i think is the best yep. way to do it yep yep so uh who's starting with this bad boy let's go with paul oh geez all right <laughs> we'll start with me um toss this, this week i am carrying the rook uh p831 sf uh it's a pretty knife it is a pretty little knife, for that, sure. That's the only nice thing I'm going to say about it today. <laughs> 1428 Sandra. That's another nice thing I'll say about it. I, I've seen some pictures. Tip that, up? Yeah. So this is this is Joe's knife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is Joe's budget carry knife. He said, yeah, for the price of what you're getting, if I had a budget carry knife, I'd be picking this one type of thing. It is good on paper. Yes. Yeah. On paper. <laughs> I knew Nigel wasn't going to like it, just because it's... Purely right-handed. Very, very right-handed. It is a... He's not a, the only one that's... Yeah. I know, I know. I'm actually but very I'm more surprised. picky about it than you. <laughs> yeah. There is no milling for a pocket clip for the left-hand side, and it is only a right-hand stud. Which is not an uncommon feature for rogue knives. No. And it's a little awkward, though, but I have gotten kind of used to it. Kind of used to it. I had been able to flick it out, but it's awkward. It is awkward. Well, and... <laughs> Thumb stud is is quite recessed. So even mm. left hand opening, it's, or it's, right hand or opening, or right hand opening. Sorry, the, it beat up my thumb pretty good. It's got a yeah. strong enough detent on it. You're pinning the frame lock on the backside. Um, so there's a lot of pros, but there's a lot of cons as well. <laughs> Most of what we one of the stipulations was that I really wanted to give the uh, give these guys a knife that is still currently in production. Most of my cheaper knives were bought a number of years ago. A lot of them have been out of production, or these guys have owned them, like the Heyo from CRKT was a contender. Yeah, I owned um, that guy. And I really think there's something wrong with my hands, because these guys will tell you about the hot spots they felt while cutting with this knife. And I, so many. I just don't notice, or I don't care. It, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram and... That's the majority of you. Um, so get on it. No. Um, but I am, you need I'm, to post more content for people to this, follow. This yeah. is true. <laughs> um, i call you out on that No, that, that's totally true. And that's, that, that is my own fault. Um, but I was trained as a jeweler. And my hands, I just don't notice discomfort as much as these guys do with this knife. So that being said, I thought it was a nice gentlemanly carry option for light to medium use. I got to call you out on that one from coming from the blacksmith. Yes, which is why I'm so confused. <laughs> it's like, it just, it doesn't bother me. Like, I've never had a problem uh, disengaging or opening or cutting. Or Now, that being said, I can, I can understand this area here being a little tight, but... Yeah, for... And by a little tight, he means the three out of the four of us found that extremely uncomfortable right in there when you're gripping. Yeah. There's a light there. My thumb still hurts. I'm fucking that thing open for the last two days. The thumb yeah. stud itself. It's yeah. so far recessed, but you got to jam your You're thumb You're really going to struggle there. with it. Yeah, I find that every single one of those shoulder corners makes a hot spot, and then I'm getting a hot spot on the back there. 
And the top shoulders are a little hot spotty for me personally. You're talking about hot spots in your hands. I had, had hot spots in my pocket with this thing. Every time I reached in my pocket, it would jabby like that. It's that true. back end would jab me yeah, in the yeah. hand. I'm looking at that. I did. I was the only one that didn't carry that. I played with it tonight before recording to see what it was like, and instantly found that hot spot on the inside there. Mm-hmm. But then this back one, I do actually find it in the back of my hand when I'm carving on it as well. But as soon as you said in the pocket, that's what I thought about. Yep. And it's funny that you pointed that out because. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and yeah. As far as flicking, uh, like I'll pin the frame lock all day. There's, it's I tried. This is a two hand night for me. Like yeah. seriously, I've, I was able to get the flicking, but it's awkward in like three out of five times. Nigel was <laughs> doing it off camera. He's not just saying it. He was actually. Uh, he showed me even today. Just a snap. It was open. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's see if I can do that again. But keep talking. Absolutely. Um, and again, this is kind of why I was interested in seeing your guys' uh, opinions of it. Because I none of these were issues for me, and they still aren't, even being made aware of them after the fact. Mm-hmm. Did anybody actually use the secondary lock at any point? I did. No, back I in the backyard when I was oh. carving some wood just tonight. Hello, Luna. <laughs> this is Her Luna. first appearance. <laughs> she was going to come out to play eventually, and she wants attention. Yep. So. She always does because she's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is an attention whore. Um, with the secondary lock, I mean, it was no different than the manual no, lock. No, no. I just clicked it on because I wanted to see all the features. There's some pro sides to this, like we said. On paper, and mm-hmm. even if they refined it a little bit, this could be... A fantastic knife. Most definitely. Without even bringing price point up that much. Yeah, I do really like the steel. I really enjoy the blade shape and how thin it is. It is a good slicer. Um, pretty much all my issues are are just how hard the corners are on the handle. It's and really the ergonomics yeah, for you guys. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, quick question. How would you guys feel about having these scales maybe not quite doubled, but definitely increased in thickness. Would that kind of alleviate those harsh corner problems? It would definitely help a little bit, I think. I don't know. The weight. I'm, I'm thinking about Oh, it's this. going to be heavier for sure. I'm thinking about this step to this step here, and I don't know if it would help or not being thicker, because as mm-hmm. long as you've got that milling right in there, mm. it's, it's two different level changes when you're holding the knife, and you feel both of them individually. So I don't know. Now, we did kind of mention there was some G10 variation that I don't know if they had in the works or it's already been released but uh, yeah if they do come out with one I'm hoping that the rounding of the, the G10 will help mm-hmm. I would um, think it would alleviate some yeah. of that hurt spots I th- it I th- would be nice um, a little bit thicker would help but then also maybe just breaking the inside edges of everything a little bit because that's what I found on the back side especially to be a hot yeah. spot was just how sharp and crisp the inside edges are. And you know All what? All it takes is breaking those, those Yeah, edges. and yep. it, it's it's too bad too because they did a really good job of chamfering the exterior angles and now that you mm-hmm. mentioned it, that is actually relatively sharp. Yep. Now that being said, before these before you guys have been carrying this, I never really used it all that hard. I mean, we were carving wood in the backyard a couple minutes ago, but um, when I use this knife, it's normally a fairly light grip and if I'm pressing with any part, I'm still a loose grip pressing with the back of my thumb. I haven't noticed any issues, but up till that point, I haven't been using it in a very harsh hammer grip or saber grip. Um, no, I, I'm saying I'm definitely not saying you guys are incorrect. I think you guys are probably right on the money for the majority of people. Now, you disassembled this knife, Joe. I did. And it has got some features on the inside oh that, my again, God. like as far as sweet stuff goes... It, it's got a lot going for it. It just needs to be refined, right? So if we, well, if we could make it work, I'll actually up, I'll send pictures to Nigel. Maybe he can get them into the video. But there are actually um, there are a lot of internal pockets. I don't know if this is really going to be captured on camera. I'll just I'll just send the pictures to Nigel. Mm-hmm. If I can't get those pictures to work, I'll take new ones. I think I have um, those pictures as well because I saved them when yeah. you sent them to me. But you but. can see where the beta lock assembly is, and I think that's called the beta lock. Yeah. Um, but the milling is just just awesome, like very similar to what they do with ZT knives. Um, it has a it is adjustable pivot from both sides, but this side is the female side, and it is a it is a like a D shape, so it's a non spinning pivot. So only one torque screw, not no yeah. You don't yeah. Yeah. exactly. So it locks in place. Um, and then some skeletonizing on the insides, the milling. Yeah, to that's what I was talking weight, about. They, um, right? like they actually yeah. did a pretty excellent job. And again, we'll show you the pictures, guys. But uh, they did a really nice job of making this nice, nice and lightweight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the price point, all the fit and finish, and the attention to detail that they do put into these knives is 
very awesome for the company and like just as a standard in general for sure. And again, yeah. it looks pretty, but I think you guys are right in saying maybe don't use this uh, if you're going to be yeah. pushing it really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably a light office knife. Yeah, light yeah, yeah for sure. And that's why I got it, it because looks like a gentleman's knife. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. I got this for college carry. Actually, I'm like you know what? I don't. I, just in case, you know, I don't want anybody to complain. This is a very Honestly, I think it's a very aesthetically pleasing looking knife. Oh, it, yeah, Open I definitely closed, do it's... like the design of it and the looks of it for sure. But, but practical, hard use application. Yeah. And, and for two lefties sitting at the table. Yes. That was a huge thing too. Man, right hand. Rook needs to get on board even, with that. They don't even go yeah. on the other yeah. side. Right hand, like I kind just of... a little notch on this side. You can put a thumb stud mm -hmm. on the other side and at least make it a little easier for us to open type of thing. But every single knife that Rook produces is ignoring us lefties. And yeah. it, They've got you've made your choices, <laughs> I don't right. agree with them. To, to be fair, though, they're a fairly new company. Yes. Hopefully they will learn from this and yep. go forward. Yep. And I think part of this discussion, I thought it was important to highlight that, that yes, for lefties, this totally sucks. There's no place for a pocket clip that, that loop over or not on the other side, um, like, the, like these guys were just saying. Not only is it super close, but if you're lefty, you're kind of... You gotta mm. learn how to finger flick it, and I mean that's mm -hmm. just that a, was a no. process. Like I was determined to learn. And like ZTs I've run into in the past is I like to pin the frame lock yeah. with my thumb, and if you're pinning the frame lock, that's basically trapping the detent in the hole, mm -hmm. and you yeah, never snap that. that knife out. I'll never finger flick it. So I, this is almost a two-hand opening. Yep. Now it's also got ball bearing. No, these are actually phosphor bronze washers. They just did such a good job of machining everything that it's ridiculously smooth. And they did like relief holes to trap oil and stuff they, in the bronze. I thought I remember you sending me that picture. We on will those reference as well. the pictures. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure you're right, but I'm not 100%. Because that was the two things that I was like, holy, the attention to detail on this knife was actually really impressive and for the machining. But good attempt. Excellent attempt on a, on a well-machined knife, but a little bit further to go as far as good ergonomics. Is that kind of where we're sitting with it? Or yeah, pretty yeah, much, so. yeah. yeah, I think that yeah. pretty much covers everything. Yep. And again, if they refined it, this would be a sweet, sweet knife. They just need to refine it another 10 20% nicer than what mm -hmm. it is already. And I think we'd all be on board, for sure. For sure, sure. yeah. Well, that's it. All right. So, yeah. I have been carrying Dennis's buck knife. You gotta have a buck knife in the collection. You it is a classic to. for sure. Talk about oh, historically yeah. relevant. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. And I was looking through all my budget knives on what to use for this, and this mm. one wasn't my initial thought because I've got a dozen different ones that are just all kicking around. But then I saw it sitting there, and I was like, that fits into a budget knife category, mm -hmm. and it's a classic design. Let's throw it out there as something unique, as something that's not modern, and put it in the mix of what everyone thinks. Because and it's iconic absolutely yeah. Yeah. um i'm sure everybody's played with their own with a buck knife at some point i've got my own version with 420 high carbon the standard version um do you guys own buck knives i do not not in a i, I own a light and i think it's the 112 light okay, okay. But, I mean, as far as the play, I know Nigel's played with my Bach, and there's some Kershaws that are kind of a Kershaw yeah. look-alike, the Schrade old-timers. I mean, everyone's p played with a knife that looks exactly well, like this, regardless I, of the brand. I right? own the Benchmade Crooked River, and as if you can't say that's kind of very stylistically the same. Yeah, yeah. for sure it is. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, really talking about style, what a gorgeous knife that is. Like, yeah. Uh, the the it, wood and the brass are just... And this oh, is nice. this is how it looks aged. Obviously, these guys have been carrying it for a while. I missed out on this particular knife, but as I own the standard version, it's not a big deal. But you can see how the brass has been aged, and I really like the way that turns to almost like a sandstone sort of look, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you guys find about as far as... Uh, <laughs> how'd you like it as your so, EDC? beginning of the week, Paul was carrying this yep. bad boy. Yep. And to be honest, the biggest pain in the butt with it is the sheath. I am I tend to like to carry things um, either in pocket or from a dangler. This pocket clip is a little bit low for me. It's a little uncomfortable for wearing it around on my hip. But I actually threw it on an oh. S-beater um, and dangled it. And when I was dangling, it was just fine. With it right on your belt, you were finding that this was just hitting your hip a little too much. It, it was just digging into my hip. I, yeah, yeah. I let's, let's drive forklifts and stuff like that a lot for work. Um, and it's just in the way. It, when you're dry, when you're stepping into a forklift, oh, okay. you're yeah, bumping yeah, into it all the, the time. The bending factor, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But you put it on one of bumping those night ease <laughs> bumping. You're you're bumping a little bit, but those night ease carabiners. That's the yeah. double S carabiner mm -hmm. or whatever. And you clipped it on your belt and actually had it dangling from that. 
Yeah, and like one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, I saw you do it, and I laughed at first, and then I was like, "That's not a bad." Idea. <laughs> no, it, it's a little goofy, but it works. Yep. Yeah, I was when I was carrying this guy. I was just rocking the belt sheath on my belt and hip carrying it, and it was a little annoying because I don't usually carry something on my left side, even though I'm left-handed. Anytime I carry my fixed blade, it's on my right side for a cross draw. So just getting used to the something sticking out of my belt on that side, but after like half a day, I was pretty much used to it. Excuse me. One, <laughs> um, one of my last jobs working in a warehouse. Um, this was not this exact knife, obviously, but my 420 version. Um, I th that's what I carried in the freezer because at the time, wearing gloves with the big rubber tracks, um, it was the easiest knife to take out of a pouch rather than go into my pocket and open up rather than carry a fixed blade because we weren't allowed to do that. Um, classy knife, though. I mean, my grandpa's had one. My dad's had one. I've, all, I've, I've had one. and um, I really do like just the smooth... I, I know they have the version with the finger grooves. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, the, yeah. I think it's just called the grooved version. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think about the uh, the smoothness of the handle? I'd go smooth all the way. I yeah, want, yeah. I fits more hands. Yeah, I would not want the one with. The I'm, I'm of the same opinion. Right yeah. now, the way it is, it, it doesn't matter whose hand it is. It picks it up. You can and and the grooves. All of a sudden, it limits where your fingers can go. Whose yeah. hand those grooves fit into, type of thing. Yeah. So how do they fit with the? Oh wow, yeah, you got yeah, lots of room. It's even just like slightly big. Like I've got like half a finger length at mm -hmm. the end. There still. And ultimately, I threw this one in as my favorite budget knife is because my father, for him, this is the ultimate knife. It doesn't get better than this. Mm -hmm. uh, we real know like use a, yeah. Real men use a buck 110. Yeah. <laughs> Old farm boy, tried and true classic, for I sure. I didn't mention it before, um, but I actually carried this in pocket for a day as well, just out of curiosity to see how it would sit. Yeah. And it sat vertically beside my cell phone all day. And again, we it was were fantastic. In, in your main pocket. In my yeah, main pocket. That's interesting. I yeah. car I've carried it like that too. I've only ever carried it now in certain uh, pairs of jeans of mine. They had a really deep change pocket. I've carried it in that per in that pocket, but I've never right. carried it just in like the regular yeah. side pocket. And you can call a triad lock as strong as you want, but you hear that sound of that lock back, and that's... I seem to it's recall... Secure. It's, it's not secure. a subtle click when no. that thing locks down, right? I like seem to true. recall some recent testing of back locks in general, and a Buck 110 was tested. It, it did very, very, very well. And talk about tried and true. I mean, how many generations of people have been carrying Buck the Buck 110 model, and how long has that remained unchanged? 1960, we looked it up the other day. 62? 68? 60, yeah, 62. 62? I want to say 61, 62, 61. 61 something 62. like that, because mm -hmm. we were looking at the dots on the maker marks and what year they were made, because Buck... For the 110, at least, they actually like document their history phenomenally. You can see what... You were saying this is the first lockback, too, right? To my knowledge, I, I believe so. Someone might fact-check and scream at me, but to my knowledge, this was the first lockback that was made, was a buck 110. Yeah, and the little mark just behind the numbers there is what we're talking about with the being able to date stuff. If you guys Google buck uh, logo date... I think there's a chart that comes out on Google Images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the like underneath Crescent Moon with the dot next to the yes. 110. You'll see um, anvil on some of them. You'll see squares. You'll see double dots. But literally, that little mark tells you exactly what every single buck year it was made. And I love it when people come in and they talk to me about their buck 110 and grandpa's buck 110. <laughs> and it was dated back in 1964 when he got it. And you look at the maker's mark and you're like... This is a 2002 model. <laughs> <laughs> I, Happens so often. I, I don't yeah. say like anything. I don't crush people's <laughs> dreams to think that this was their grandpa's 60s knife because maybe he passed away and handed it to him, and it's got a story yeah. that. Of course, it may. I'm be. not going to be that evil guy, but it, it makes me laugh. Every it, time. it might be his grandpa's knife, but it definitely wasn't his grandpa's first knife. No. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I should point out the fact too that carrying this in my pocket. I had my cell phone in that same pocket and my PPT, and it was more comfortable to, to get this out of my pocket than it was to get this out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was okay. more comfortable with all of that mass well, in my front geez. pocket than it was to deal with this. See, I, I didn't look at the clip on the Rook as much, being that I, I was the only one that didn't carry it. I didn't actually throw it I in didn't my hate pocket. the clip. I will say, I've also loosened that clip. It was much tighter when but I first got it. This feels like you've got enough pinch here mm -hmm. that you should be able to just grab and... It's not the grabbing, it's, it's getting into your pocket and getting anything else. You jam your this, hand yeah. on oh, the side on of it. this, this yeah. jabby piece. Yeah. And I will say, yeah, okay. Okay, I see what you're saying there. If yeah. you look at the angle 
for where this is going to sit. Yeah, absolutely. That corner is really going to stick. It's going to another dip. another criticism, definitely. Yep. And this is actually in my rotation box. Well, my two rotation boxes now that I have because I have two rotation boxes because one wasn't enough. <laughs> and this sits in my second rotation box now, still to this day. So I will it's throw it. Mm-hmm. And I don't use it with the pouch. The pouch is sitting in a spare room, thrown away type of thing. I brought it because you guys wanted the whole package, right? But yep. did we mention that this version was S30V? We didn't dabble on it, but yeah. this particular yeah. one is the Cabela's exclusive with the S30V. So if people are wondering about the Black and Blade, that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Yes, compared to the Mirror Polish Blade. Now, on their customizer, you can get the 420 with a Black Blade if you want oh, to, even enough. as well, because that's one of their options on Bucks customizing. We need to mention the spine, too, just for mm-hmm. talking about the uh, aesthetics. The fact that they blackened the blade and then polished the spine. Oh, on just all nice. the way up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. down they the whole lock nice, back. Yeah. That was a nice touch. It is. Um, Zoom in for that. Now, I have to dabble on the weight. We haven't talked about it, but it's a, it's bit, of, a, it's a bit of a chubby pig. It's sure. a chunky monkey. Absolutely. You, you can blame me for that. I didn't bring my scale this time. so um, I want to say it's over five ounces. Easily. Like 5.2, 5.4, something like that type of thing, right? Um yeah, so compared to some of the other budget folders, that Rook knife, I'm guessing yeah. three. Yeah, probably. It's still stainless like steel. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure guys will post in the forum the actual weights of them because Paul's lazy and not bringing his scale because, <laughs> you know, this isn't obligation or anything. I Come needed on. it for Come another on. thing and I forgot that it was another in my thing. Bag. Currently, anyway. it is 7.2 ounces. Seven? Jeez. <laughs> so, yeah, chunky, chunky. monkey. Is so, right. it'll wear right through your pockets. <laughs> Apparently, yes. <laughs> Although, I've never had monkey. that happen. Yeah, it's solid. Chunky They're not skeletonizing monkey. anything on this knife. They've had it for years. They're but not going to now. Although they solid. came out with the light version, right? They did. And they've got a light version Pro that also has the S30B that you can buy with the uh, like gravery handle or whatever they're calling it. The mm-hmm. plastic. It's plastic. Yeah, yeah. It's a plastic handle. Um, so, yeah, it's... Yeah, I think it was one of my favorite ones to carry as far as the ergonomics and the by far ease of use and stuff like that for sure it it that thing did everything i needed to do it it cut out every box that i needed to cut at work straps everything like that it cut my meals and it was fantastic every single time every time i pulled out of my pocket it was great one small question before we close off on this guy how do you guys feel how, did you guys ever end up opening it with one hand as- yep yeah, yeah, I can I definitely can, do that for sure. I can kind of do a pinch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. you can even pressurize it. I yeah, well, I can or not. Do you like a pinch to get it halfway? Yeah. And then I can and then pressurize yeah, it yeah. from there. Yeah. And there is that company still to this day. I think they're called Quickset or something like that that has the, the thumb, thumb studs. studs that you yeah, can buy you can get those day. on. That yeah. company still exists. They've been around for 40 years making money off of thumb studs. <laughs> like it's, yeah. But yeah, I could just do it there too. Mm-hmm. I wonder as I was if chatting. you could flick it open with that. And I can do it without even a pinch. You I can pressure would your, need more room. <laughs> yeah. So you can pressure your thumb enough that yeah. I'm not even using my finger. And you can now, I was, as I was doing that, I was a little hesitant about it coming back on me. It, I was worried about twist, as, twisting the blade and stuff and messing up the alignment by doing that too early to get it started. Yeah, yeah. So I that's can, why I was not that. still pinching out. I, want to pick it on I wouldn't do it with a triad. Yeah, that's what I was doing to yep, get yep. it open a lot Spidey of times. drop? Drop yeah. it like mm-hmm. that, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely an enjoyment to carry. Um, take about 25% off of that. And I would carry it in my pocket right now. Yeah, like yeah, a little bit lighter. Like if it was a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit smaller. Well, and they do have the 112. That's, yeah. And, I mean, 420 is great and awesome. And in the budget folder line, the 420 Especially. carbon versions of this or the 112 are super cheap. But if you're willing to go to Bucks Customizer or to Cabela's where they've got the exclusives with the S30, the the steel upgrade is just, I mean... Can you get a 112 in S30? I believe you can, but not through Cabela's. I think it has to be through the customizer. That's okay. As far as this knife goes, and as far as the majority of people out there with the 420 high carbon, um, in my experience, it was a, almost as good as a really well done Oz 8. And that's 420. So from Paul Boss and his heat treatments and the regimens that they have going on at Buck, he does a wonderful job. Yeah, the good old flamey symbol here. If you get that on any sort of Buck, you know you've got something good in the bank type of thing, man. Um I'll put bu- bu- uh, Bucks S30 with the Paul Boss. I'll put it up against any S30 on the market. Like, And I- I'm not even that much of a Buck fanboy. I mean, the classics are good, but his heat treatment, I've played with a lot of different companies' S30s. And, I mean, even Cold Steel's now using S35s and stuff like that, and I've played with a bunch of and. 
Paul Bloss, man, like it's his his heat treatment on his S30 does not mess around. No, they've got sure. a good thing going. Indeed, they do. So, uh, that we can call her. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> I guess that's on to me here yep. for the second half of this. Uh, we had your Rook Buck. I got Nigel's Rook coming back around, and it's the little M11 slip joint. Um, they make them in like multi-tool form, like a Swiss Army knife, but this is just the classic, just the blade by itself. 1227 Sandvik. Uh, who had this knife? You had this knife for the beginning. You that, had this that knife. That was me. Yep, yep. Joe had it first. Yeah. Uh, has the window punch on the back. Has a decent pair of tweezers, and this pair of tweezers will kick the crap out of the pair of like Swiss like, Army. Within a half hour of me handing it over to Joe when playing around in the forge that day, he was already like, "Ooh, tweezers, excellent!" I was picking metal splinters out of my palms. Um, normally, the Swiss Army knife gets that job, but these are better tweezers. So these are better they're tweezers, nice tweezers for sure. Yeah. Um, so overall, positive. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, yeah. It's a good little knife. Um, it is one of the their mid-size ones. They do have uh, three different sizes that they do on these ones. A uh, cute little keychain one, this mid-size one, and then one that's a little bit bigger. The tweezers and glass punch on the back are present on both the large and the medium, but yep. not the small. Yeah. Um, it is a right-handed only carry option for the pocket clip, but with the old-school slip joint styling of it, I didn't really find that annoying or a hindrance, so I still bought it anyways. Yeah, for lefties, yep. it doesn't come that that much into play because it's still going to be sitting against the seam of your pocket, right? Yeah, <laughs> you bet. And even when you're drawing it out, it's going to be a two-handed. So there's no way, like, come to terms with the fact that it's just not a quick opening knife. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a slip yeah. joint. Like, exactly. you're not if as you're, concerned about it, right? Absolutely. And I mean, if you're comfortable carrying something like a Swiss Army knife of any kind, I think you'll be happy with something like this. Um, from my experience, for what I was using this for at the time, for the time that I had it. Better edge holding than Victorinox, obviously with the 12C versus the Inox in-house brand that they use. Um, used it for a variety of tasks, from cutting steak to cutting open boxes. And it was actually a, quite a pleasure to use. I Both, better sorry. sticking with that tonight. Yeah. yeah. It does Sur a nice job for what it is, for sure. Yeah. Surprisingly capable. And for... Even myself, I tried it in a number of grips and really, really laid into it as far as cutting cardboard. I really wanted to try the ergonomics on it. I had it all weekend long. And there's a box over there that's just got tiny little shreds of cardboard <laughs> yep. that I was playing with. And I was pinch gripping. And honestly, when I was pinch gripping it, I was finding that the pocket clip was a little bit of a hot spot. But as soon as I changed it over to the, like, the full hammer grip, and I do have a skinny enough apple picking <laughs> finger that I can do it I can get here and get well. that pinky um, on there. And it was fantastic to just start chopping into, for sure. As opposed to me, when I do a hammer grip, it's pretty much a three finger knife for me. So I'm. Going a little bit more of a saber grip, and that's super comfortable. But with the very basic handle shape, it seems to work well for everybody at the mm -hmm. table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of the same with the buck, with the, the smooth contouring. It's just, <clears throat> excuse me, it's uh, very easy to index and very comfortable for pretty much any size hand. And it's kind of funny, too. This really is the, um, not so much an answering to, but like a, uh, Dickyotomy? What would you call that? And, 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 um... An opposite to Spyderco's overdone, in some instances, uh, approach to being ergonomic, where you mm -hmm. want to have all these deep finger choils and these ramps. This is just super simple, not a heck of a lot to screw up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's why it works so well for our different sized hands. It lets you put your hand where you want to put your hand at the end of the day. It makes yeah. you comfortable because you can just grab it however you want to grab it. Did anybody notice any drawbacks to having such a simple handle? And I suppose um, we could have asked this about the buck as well, but did anybody... I mean, it is a slip joint. You're not relying on a lock. Yeah, no, I personally didn't find anything... I think it goes back to the finger groove thing, where a finger groove has to fit your hand in a lot of cases, where if you don't have the same grooves that whoever made it had, then it won't fit you, whereas a nice square handle, the buck, the rook knife, the they all have that square enough handle where your position is up to you at that point, right? <laughs> so... I actually kind of like that nice simple design behind it. Even like the case sod busters that are similar to this and things like that, right? Like it's, yeah. Those types of knives have a pretty big following. <clears throat> they do. Now, something cool that I noticed on this particular guy is with the tweezers, 
Um, they skeletonized the liners on this one to try to reduce the weight, which is really cool. I don't know what this one weighs, but I'm guessing it's 1.6-ish ounces. <laughs> like, it's light. 1.8 ounces, something like that. If someone remembered a scale... Skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> what was the number on that guy again? The M11. M11. Okay. Um, with skeletonizing the liners, the tweezer, you can actually see the tweezer sliding in and out inside the handle when nice. you're. Which means that if it got gunked up, anything in that, it's going to fall out into the knife and hopefully in cleaning and things like that, it's actually not going to gunk up that slide. Whereas on a Swiss Army knife, it's just a hole against a steel plate, so if anything yeah. gets in that hole as far as cleaning, as far as whatever... Yeah, you're going to have a fight on your hands. You're digging it out instead of this one where it's just daily maintenance on the knife when you're cleaning out the inside from pocket lint and things like that. It's all mm -hmm. going to fall into there. So I thought that was a cool little feature. Indeed. As, as far as weight goes, 2.12 ounces. Cool. It's over two. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But just barely. Yeah. yeah, I guess with the solid steel frame. And yeah, cut fantastically. Like it's... yeah. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with this guy. It was quite comfortable for being a small little, basically a better version of a Swiss Army knife. Like, Speaking of disassembly, and I know I harped about this on my Sabenza last time, but pretty sure all the screws are the same. Uh, yep, yep, they are uh, <coughs> are all the same. Um, I have actually taken this guy apart, uh, just considering redoing the scales. haven't actually done anything about that yet, but uh, they are all the same. And the one thing that I really enjoyed when I did take this apart was when I uh, when I popped off the screws for the pocket clip, they actually have a little steel plate on the inside that's threaded for the screws rather than threading into the G10 or into the liners. Which is a simpler, elegant, more, uh, yeah. more I don't know, well-thought-out solution rather than just mm -hmm. having posts that have, have to be deground and, uh, and basically inlaid in the, in the G10. Yeah. Very nice touch. Um, and because of the disassembly as well, easily customizable. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do some sort of scales on these, and I think there's plans to oh, do some goodness. sort of scales oh, yes. on yeah. these. There is for sure. It's really cool to check it out. Yeah. Um, other than steak itself, anything else hard <laughs> that you cut? Cause... Um, lots of cardboard, actually. Um, opening up a couple of packages for some vacuum bags for the shop back in my garage. Um, Oh, what else? Uh, bubble wrap, clamshell packaging. Yeah, no, it did uh, pretty much everything I've done with my with a lot of uh, slip joint knives like this. It did it did the job very well. Um, and I mean, a lot of it is obviously to do with handling, but I never felt at risk because it you know mm -hmm. because it doesn't have a lock. As far as performance, full flat grind on twelve C twenty eight N Sandvik, uh, it it performs. It performs very nicely. Mm -hmm. And on that note of the, the half slip on it like that, <clears throat> I do know that the, like a lot of time in the slip joint and kind of the old school community, they do like kind of having a very crisp half stop. This guy does not have a crisp half stop. It's kind of a rounded over, so it does still kind of index in and doesn't fall straight in, but it's not a crisp. Yeah, like you'll get on a GEC or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I will dabble on the 12C27 because I laid this one into cardboard pretty hard to change grips to see how I liked it. And honestly, all grips I really felt were pretty nice. But I did touch it up afterwards as well, and I hit it with the 14,000 grit spider curl, the super fines. Uh -huh. And as far as a quick polish on a 12C27, that was something that impressed me so nice. Being the crazy snobberies that are working with the 3Vs and the M4s and the S90s and all the stuff that you've seen from the last couple episodes, to get this 12C27, and as soon as it slowed down, I just touched it with the all super fine, and it just came back to just like an instant razor. As far yeah. as like the budget knives we're talking about and the steels that are easily maintainable, you get into the nerdery factor of... Sandvik is a really pure steel. I think yeah. that's why it worked out so well. Yeah. yeah. Polishes up super nice, takes a really keen edge. And I think the stone on the Spider Coast super fine is hard enough that it cuts that edge in super quick, but it's also a high polish enough stone that it's actually going to leave a nice finish on it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like a quick strop or even cutting through cardboard to rip the, the burr off is all this thing took. Like <clears throat> it was instantly back to just a razor blade. So, so, and this guy comes in three flavors we have the brown, the green, and the black, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. 
And I mean, it is also produced by Boker, so they do also carry a carbon fiber version that you can get through the Boker line. That's pretty much exactly the same version, just rebranded and a lot more expensive. Which is <laughs> like, that should be enough to deter me, but it expensive. isn't. I don't even know. I think it might barely fall into the budget category still, but barely with kind the carbon fiber. Kind of like the $80 mark sort of thing, Where 80, 80 it, Canadian. If, and on that note, I don't know if we've ever actually specified what our budget was. It oh, was... Under a hundred US is yes. what we were considering the budget, and we yeah. tried to go with the MSRPs. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, because we're Canadian, I could only find a Canadian MSRP, which was thirty dollars and ninety-five cents, but that equivalents to twenty-three dollars and ninety-five cents. Yeah, for twelve C. Yeah, twelve C twenty-seven. Holy. So twenty-five bucks American, and you can get Such yourself a good deal. the way better version of what a Swiss Army should be. Yep. If you like a Swiss Army knife, <laughs> yeah. you don't use all the tools, get this knife. Yes. Now we'll backtrack that a little bit because we do have. A little bit of time here. Uh, this particular version of the buck, still being a budget knife, was 95 American. They were currently on sale at Cabela's at 75 American. I saw them at that, so it barely falls into the budget category. The normal bucks with the 420 high carbon only go for about $65. I think it's 80 MSRP on Buck's website. And then the Rook knife over there, I don't honestly know what the MSRP was. I know it's $49.99 Canadian. Mm -hmm. For this guy, so I'm guessing it's somewhere around the $34.99 MSRP for American, something like that type of thing. So again, reflect above this being like on the very high end because of the S30, but even then, $65. Yeah, for the three of them. So and we're raving about this $25. <laughs> the $25 do takes it. the crap out of the $35. Yeah. They do it sure. so well. Like they do, man. So I think. That pretty much sums up this little guy. Mm. He was rocking. I was super yeah. impressed for a $25 knife. Um, yeah, I, w I would carry that a lot. It was way more comfortable and way more solidly built than a lot of $25 knives on the market, that's for sure. Yep. I might so, buy that in black. But last but not least. <clears throat> All right. So this one has been over the last few days, and it's not a knife I'd normally carry. But you guys seem to like it a hell of a lot. The pillar. And this is Paul's pillar <laughs> yes, from is. CRKT. It yep. started with him, it went to me next, and I put it through some paces. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been places. I've had this freaking knife at the top of a mountain with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember those pictures, too. Yeah, I think yep. they're on your Instagram. As they well sure for, Yeah, yeah. So, specs on this guy. I'm assuming we don't know the weight. I'll look that up in a minute. But uh, we we're don't. dealing with stainless steel backspacer with stainless steel scales, lock side, and a very thick 8CR 13MOV blade. It's pretty it's, chunky. It's a heavy knife for the it size. It is a chunky monkey. Like, I looked it up at the beginning of the week. I believe it was a 4.2. Okay. Because that's when I commented yeah. on the fact that it was the same weight as my Sliz Bowie for yeah, half a right, knife. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So, but what a half a knife. It's, it's, it does nice. Yeah. It's yep. solid. Um, when I was carrying it around, I didn't notice as much shifting around as I had this, suspected. I was actually quite worried about that. I was talking to Dennis here. But the first day I got, I'm like, oh, oops. man, I'm, I'm so worried that I'm going to drop this because the pocket clip is so damn small <laughs> and the handle is so so short. I never had any problems with it, so I'll, I'll eat my words. It, it sits very nicely in the front pocket. We were having a private conversation pre recently about lock sides of knives and how more companies need to make them pretty. Mm -hmm. And that lock side is very nice for for what you're what you're paying for that knife with that cool little ribbing right in the cutout yeah. there yeah. like yeah. that that Voxna's uh attention to detail mm -hmm. is and just beautiful all it is is three channels instead of one and yet it looks so much better yeah. it looks intentional and, and that's oh sorry go for it i was going to mention when you were talking about it falling out of your pocket and i basically had said to joe don't worry about it the thing's so heavy that it sinks <laughs> into your pocket and you don't have to worry about that it clip. doesn't go anywhere yeah. there's no on. internal milling on this thing no. this is it, it's, a, it's a solid what you solid see is knife. what you get and there's a whole bunch of stainless steel going on yeah. in, in fantastic ways it cuts great mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't get the chance to carry this guy, but I did play around with it a whole bunch before we started filming tonight, and it actually feather sticks really nicely. Oddly enough. <laughs> like, something about that that width you get, mm -hmm. off that thickness with, exactly that, with that uh, the, the deep bevel there. Um, and then, it, I mean, it's not my first pick. I mean, even now, because of the weight, I don't know if I would get it for myself, but 
as far as it is ergonomically speaking with that nice curve almost like a thumb ramp that just allows you to rest there and like you guys were doing choking back and having your thumb here like it's just incredibly well thought out mm -hmm. i i tried it like i said i had it for three days and I took apart a whole bunch of cardboard. Like, I just went to town on it when an order came in. And again, cube-sized pieces just to see what this thing could do in different grips. And I had it in pinch grip where I was laterally cutting stuff. And it worked really awesome. And then I put it into that choke back grip. And for some reason, as long and skinny as my finger has, I loved that grip. It was <laughs> weird. but And then even then, Nigel, when he showed me, like, choking up for the feather sticking. Because I was choking back to begin with. I choked right up and I started to do a little feather sticking. And so much more control. The control... <laughs> that you have on there compared to the power. And I think that's what I got is when I choke back on here, it's a shorter grip there, but you can really More push force. your thumb yeah. into it hard. Type and of. kind of the main reason why you started getting into experimenting and trying to figure out all the different grips is, I remember you talking about how when you're indexed up into that front choil there, it's very hard or very easy to scuff your knuckles on whatever material you're cutting and then it doesn't give you much blade exposed that's not hindered by your thumb on the back side as well yeah and that was one of the things is i was hitting my finger a lot into especially longer cuts where i was just pushing through stuff and i had longer strips of cardboard that i was cutting and i was pushing through and i was clipping my thumb and my finger on those and i found as soon as i choked back on it that freed up the blade enough that you could just power straight through and not have it conflict with your hand right so trying to do big jobs with a small knife basically right and just talking about how small of a knife it is for those of you who are curious who haven't considered this knife before uh we're looking at a blade length of from a cutting edge put it in mils oh in millimeters yeah uh, 51.74 millimeters for cutting edge, uh, which is two, just over two inches. And that's all you need. We're looking at about uh, you could two take this point, one flying. Yeah, 2.3 inches really? from bolster to tip. Okay, so which is, that's probably good. Yeah, for cutting yeah. edge, but they might get sticky yes, yes. Yeah. the blade. Which is blade. why I wanted yes. to get that measurement, which is uh, basically 60 millimeters. So six centimeters. That yeah. would actually work. Yeah. They might get fussy. Yeah, yeah. This is like right on the on the border of the for sure. Now, for sure. because so, uh, because the next time I fly home, we might have to try to test that out. <laughs> yeah. just like I mean, it doesn't look murdery. It doesn't have like a crazy no, tip no. or anything. I think you could I'm probably get pubs. away with it. Let's put it that way. I'm concerned that they won't yeah. let my pub on. But. On paper, this would work. Obviously, uh, you yeah. know, I might not do it with my pillar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we might have to get a second pillar for me to try it with. Yeah. So, also dabble on the cutting um, ACR for this guy. Yeah. MSRP, I'm going to guess, again, of about $35. I think it's going to be in and around. It was about 50 bucks Canadian. When yeah, I yeah. $50 yeah. Canadian. So, you're looking at about probably about 35 MSRP for US, which is, again, is the same price as that Rook over there, <clears throat> which I'll give the Rook the Steel uh, oh, for, for the sure. 1428 compared to the HCR yeah. on yeah. this guy. Um, but after chunking through a whole bunch of cardboard, I had some major, major issues with some like micro chipping along the edge. And I wasn't hitting off a of metal. I wasn't hitting off of anything. I was doing lateral cuts even through cardboard. And yes, cardboard is, we know everybody knows that cardboard is a bit more of a taxing material to go through, but it, yep. you shouldn't get micro chipping on a blade like this. We, we have all played with 8CR from different companies. This is a bit of a unique experience, and you should get consistent dulling, like I did with this guy, yeah. and I put this guy almost through as much cardboard, maybe not quite as much, because I really went to town on that one. But this guy here, you just noticed minor, minor flat spots, and again, the fourteen thousand just brought it back up to a razor blade. Mm -hmm. Whereas this guy, if I looked at along the edge, I actually had like individual tiny little micro chips, like, like little pinpricks almost, just yeah. pinpricks along the edge where it was dulling. So that, like you were talking about CRKGs. KT's heat treatment. Yeah. I was going to say, is that a tempering problem? or? Well, yeah. it's a, it seems to be a bit of a mixed bag of tricks. I mean, obviously, anyone who's watching, feel free to delve into the forms yourselves and see what a, what a show it is. But it seems like, for the most part, they get it right, but every once in a while, there's this weird sort of lemon that makes headlines. Um, now, I'm wondering, I kind of wish we had more pillars to experiment with to see if this was unique, but... I who should had, mention... Who had this if, after me? Um, not me. But I was just going to say that on was Joe's note yeah. on if we had more pillars to experiment, 
anyone out there who feels the need to send theirs in for us to play with, go for it. Yeah. We'll always accept yes. nice to play with. We will video <laughs> that testing, whether we put it up on this channel or Nigel's channel, we will definitely experiment. I should, I should mention as well, though, that uh, this is the second one that I had to get. Because the first one that I got um, had a lock failure issue. Oh, that's right. It yeah. did have a little bit of a funky lock where you could tap her and she would mm -hmm. die on you. And you could push it with your thumb and disengage yeah. it. Yeah, so again, some inconsistencies on the CRKT front. Yep. But as far as a knife goes... Great knife, great designer. Oh, uh, very design. ergonomic. Yeah, heavy. Love, we love got some cons designs. on the heavy. But yeah. Voxnez is my new Sinkovich. And I can pop it left-handed, yep. even though it's a one-way clip because it's so chunky as well. The detent is strong enough. I wasn't too concerned about it coming open in my pocket. So I did carry it left and right, regardless of whether I was a lefty. But the fact that I can pop it with the thumb, thumb. hole, because it, the thumb automatically gets you off of that frame lock, especially mm -hmm. when it's a hole, right? Yeah. So it no longer comes into play like it does a flipper. And it spidey flicks pretty decently as well. Yeah. I haven't spidey flicked it, but again, <laughs> we're not going to play that game. But yeah, <laughs> it works. Yeah, it's pretty good. It does indeed. Mm -hmm. For as heavy as it is, it's a very well-designed knife. Yeah. That it is for sure. Now, if they could give us a premium version. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and that's a common complaint with CRKTs. But that's that, honestly pretty much. I was going to say a premium version that's not a, an exclusive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That'd be nice. Yeah. As far as the Canadians, again, us <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like hard to order from Blade Crew right now. Indeed. Well, we'd like to get it from a brick and mortar store if we can, type of thing. Mm -hmm. And we can play with one. And right now, with the border as hard as it is, unless they come up with a factory release, it's hard to order from a US website and be confident that you're actually going to get it across right now. So, yeah, yeah that's the downside. But So, yeah, I think to round out this episode, unless anyone else has anything more to say on this guy, I think we're good. I say we vote on everything. I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I think it should go back to whose knife was whose. Okay. Oh, so okay. I will give this back, back to the Nigel. original owners there. And I'm going to say we start at number four. Oh, easily. Easily. Number yeah, four. All day. Um, all yeah, day. There, was, there was three of us that found this highly uncomfortable, and Joe's weird. And yes. So, so there's <laughs> something wrong with my hands. I'm headed to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Yeah. Now, having said that, it's it's about two steps away from being a fantastic yes. knife. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, for me, for the type of light use, I have put that through. I've never found those issues. I'm glad now that we I can get some more feedback on it. But I do mm -hmm. agree, this is definitely the number four out of these four. Now, number three, it, it might get interesting because this yeah. was an easy number four. Yeah. That was what are we? Easy. What are we counting as the as the number three pick? I was going to lean towards that because of the weight. The buck. Because I of think the weight. the weight and the no pocket clip yeah. is as much as I didn't really find the belt sheath too annoying. Paul had issues, and I know there's going to be other people who will have issues well, with it. I would only interject with the fact that we're all pretty much modern knife guys with an interest in traditional. So for the traditionalists out there, they're <laughs> upset that this isn't the number one, but I I have to agree. I think this yeah. is just because it's the two-handed opening, because seven of how heavy it ounces? is. Did we... yes. Yeah, yeah, seven, seven yeah. ounces. That's I mean, a Contigo, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beast. It's a beastly beast, and it is like, an awesome knife, but it's heavy. It's chunky. It if, needs a sheath. If I was out on a farm and a farmhand or working in like a more rough and tumble sort of environment all day out of these four that would be my choice for sure well, but how tanky it is absolutely yeah, yeah but we all live in a city and we all put our knives to pretty much city tasks yeah yeah this is definitely a harder yeah. use knife and when it comes to the the bang for your buck and just a solid knife for good heavy duty tasks that might not be the best it probably would come in number one yeah. but for the four guys sitting around this table yeah. um there's other factors and again price point that's definitely the most expensive yeah out of the four. That's another thing to consider. Even sitting Absolutely. Here, right? Mm -hmm. So, exactly. Yeah. Compared to the price points of the other two rankings uh -huh. of what we've got right now. Yep. Speaking of. Getting... And speaking of, we got <laughs> number two. Okay, let's number bring those two. two up here for a comparison because it's going to be know, it's going to be tight. I know already because I love the these two would have been my last two easy heads down. Yeah. yeah. For me. For me, I really think I would have to go with a Rook. Um I love the 12C. And mm -hmm. keeping in mind the performance issues that you had with the edge going away in micro, even if we put that aside just for a moment, the fact that you could bring this back to Razor Edge with minimal effort, the fact that it has these nice little extra features that work great, and how light it is, and how well designed it is, and how nicely it sits in your pocket, and for Nigel's hands, <laughs> yeah. and for all of our hands, how well it fits, 
I have to say, th I would choose this as the number one. If you made this in the Sandvik Steel, I would be hard pressed not to pick the pillar. Mm -hmm. But the steel choice, the steel is a thing that matters to me. Yeah. So even in a budget knife, I'm going to pick the nicest steel I can get for my money. Indeed, and for the price point that this guy is at, for the steel that they're offering, you can't really get much better for a steel versus money comparison. And again, yeah, that's definitely my number one as well, for sure, because the price point, the steel, the ease of fit in hands, as Joe mentioned, all the extra little features. This is talking about budget blades. We're not interested in the, you know, the craziest, most expensive, because yeah. we'd be going a different <laughs> direction. Yeah. Um, I have to go with the pillar. I really do. Nice yeah. tiebreaker. Um, yeah. well, not even so much tiebreaker, the standalone. Yeah. Be yeah, yeah. Because I'm leaning that direction <laughs> of the um, multiple grip. I, I put this mm. thing in a lot of different grips, and we were talking about finger choils and the way that they fit, but this one fit really good for me in a lot of really good ways. It's got some cons, but I mean, this also has some cons. Mm -hmm. There's some things about it, locking mechanisms. The nail yep. nick is definitely a two-hand. Rook hates left-handed people. No. <laughs> <laughs> but when we're comparing those two models, they both hate left-handed people. They, the CRKT one, they do less. Yeah, yeah but, for sure. Yeah. I but then I'm also looking at companies and their reputation for the in companies. general. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, it comes down to what do I want to do with a knife this size? And really, mm. most of those tasks, this can tackle just fine. And I don't want to have to put up the weight. Yeah. I can well, also... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> this could. This could clap. Oh, 100%. 100%. Oh, yeah. um, and, and I'm torn on it, but I was super impressed with the way that this thing handled. Yeah. I, I love that little stuff. knife. I think the hollow grind on it is a better performing edge as well. The microchipping is inconsistent from CRKT, but in the long run, if, if they came out with a premium materials version of this, yes. like they've got a premium material version of this guy, yeah. uh, this, this would blow away. This would get into some lion steel and some mm -hmm. spider coat type yeah. quality if they um, stepped it up a little bit. Right? I think if I had more of a chance to play with this guy I would probably like it a little bit more but for what I have played with it um, one of the factors that led me towards the Rook was the weight as well oh for sure yeah yeah this is a chunky little monkey mm -hmm. and we've chunky. talked about premium materials being lighter or skeletonized or yep. things like that that they exactly. can improve it on now, right? but quick question if they did skeletonize this to the extent that they did here maybe did some milling up top for texture not that it's needed and gave it something like VG10 or 154CM for me, that I would, would yeah, that would, yeah, tip, that would, that would flip it, it tip the scale, yeah, especially yeah. in I mean, a budget. Yeah, even in VG, VG10, I'd be happy. That's like all of a sudden saying, "What if this was marble carbon fiber?" And <laughs> okay, well, let's yeah. say that's okay. Well, yeah, what about like, no, no, no? Even but I mean, 12C. We're looking yeah, at the nice well, Yeah, they I was are, about right? to say, even if we what put it into the same steels. I would probably leave that way would be the same thing. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. So, and Blade HQ yeah. does have some exclusives that are rocking the 12C27, mm -hmm. which is what this has, right? But, but once again, like we mentioned, exclusives. Yeah, it would yeah. be nice as a regular production. So, but. Um, and I did notice this guy when I was pinch gripping because of the way the pocket clip mm -hmm. was as well, is mm -hmm. that it was actually catching me and it was a little bit of a hot spot on the pinch grip. When I went into the hammer grip and just treated it like a good old fashioned stick with a pointy end on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. where, and honestly, I can put this one in a bunch of different ways and I didn't really feel much of a hot spot anywhere when I started to cut into it. Yeah, so again, enough. like it's, yeah. If you could give me that performance here, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sold. Done. So, Agreed. Yeah. So yeah, just finishing up with our final favorites here, and the Rook knife was definitely a three to one favorite. And it was a close second for me too. Yeah. Like yes, I loved it in a lot of ways. It was a fun little knife to play with. Indeed, for sure. It's like a ten and a nine point nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's a good way to do so it. So yeah, close yeah, for sure. Photo finish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I don't think there's anything left to say. That's this episode. This yep, week, yep, guys. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're we going to sign out here. Nigel the Smith. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. The Iron Joe on Instagram. And exile.ca. We will all catch you all next time. Take care. Thanks, guys. We don't need bigger knife. Bigger. Yeah.